I could go on singing with Judy Garland. Oh, yes, that starts with all my gray hair. Judy Garland, <laughs> a gray hair giver. <laughs> and uh, what's interesting about that film is that it sort of paralleled her own life at the time in terms of well, her domestic problems. It's a, that were... uh, it's a wise observation you're making in terms of your question. Our goal was to parallel her life uh, even more closely, but she... Uh, powerfully resisted certain parts of that and threw her weight around and drove us crazy in all kinds of ways despite her wonderful talent so that it became uh, your observations correct intended to be about her life but it moved uh, away from that a little more than we had wanted she was you know brilliantly talented I always got goose flesh whenever she sang. But as I say, the gray hair in my head began with Judy Garland. She had her demons. I mean, it's pretty well documented. She was uh, up and down in weight with the aid of pills and medicine. She was maltreated by her home studio, MGM. Uh, so she, she had, unfortunately, severe psychological problems. I mean, charming, smart, funny, but she had her unstable moments. Yeah, and uh, was Ronald Neem a great director to work with? I mean, he went on to do the prime of Miss Jean Brody and uh, well, a lot of other yeah, he's a love. Films. First of all, he's a lovely man. Second of all, widely experienced. I think he began as a cameraman, he had worked with David Lean, lots of people, made lots of movies. So he was very assured and very good, but I think uh, this is not disparaging, but I don't think he had quite the uh, inner steel of his character to deal with Judy. Although, in fairness, maybe no one did. But uh, so, as a producer, uh, my, my then partner, Stuart Millar, and myself, as producers, we had to work inordinately hard to the point where we would get up early in the morning and pick up Judy in our car to make sure she actually showed up to work. 